bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. He has done great things. He has done done great things bless his holy name in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. the lord be with you and, with your spirit. and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries let us acknowledge our sins and as for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what, mu what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Grant this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. All the elders of Israel came in a body to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Now that you are old and your sons do not follow your example, appoint a king over us, as other nations have, to judge us. Samuel was displeased when they asked for a king to judge them. He prayed to the Lord, however, who said in answer, Grant the people's every request. It is not you they reject. They are rejecting me as their king. Samuel delivered the message of the Lord in full to those who were asking him for a king. He told them, The rights of the king who will rule you will be as follows. He will take your sons and assign them to his chariots and horses, and they will run before his chariot. He will also appoint from among them his commanders of groups of a thousand and of a hundred soldiers, he will set them to do his plowing and his harvesting and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will use your daughters as ointment makers, as cooks and as bakers. He will take the best of your fields, vineyards and olive groves and give them to his officials. He will tithe your crops and your vineyards and give the revenue to his eunuchs and his slaves. 
he will take your male and servant, female servants, as well as your best oxen and your asses, and use them to do his work. He will tithe your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When this takes place, you will complain against the king whom you have chosen, but on that day, the Lord will not answer you. The people, however, refused to listen to Samuel's warning and said, Not so, there must be a king over us. We too must be like other nations, with a king to rule us and to lead us in warfare and fight our battles. When Samuel had listened to all the people had to say, he repeated it to the Lord, who then said to him, Grant their request and appoint a king to rule them. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice, they are exalted. Forever I will see the goodness of the Lord. For you are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel, our King. Forever I will see the goodness of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door, and he preached the word to them. They came bringing, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves. So he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise up, rise, rise pick up your mat, and walk. But that you may know, that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your mat, and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. They were all astounded and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
yesterday we heard in the first book of Samuel how the Israelites tried to fight the war against the Philistines and they lost so badly and so many of them were killed and I think they were really became so hopeless and it was very difficult for them to understand especially the second battle when in their presence was the ark of God and to them having the ark of God in their presence that was going to be uh, a way of winning the battle but they failed and that's why maybe today we hear the Israelites they went to Samuel because they thought you know we may not have the king as we uh, think I think they lost confidence in God and they went to Samuel asking for the king and Samuel was displeased because they say give us a king to judge us and that was displeasing why would you have a king to judge you and when he prayed to God Samuel prayed God says well give them it's not you they reject it's me and Samuel even though God told him to do that he wanted to explain to the Israelites that this king is going to be just as human as they were that is going to maybe take care so much of himself or herself and he said all many negative things about the kingship of a human person but they were not ready to listen just give us a king they said and of course the king was given to them but what do we learn from these people sometimes it happens in our lives that we want things to work our own way uh, we want to push the will of God aside so that things should work according to the way we want and God also permits that because we have the free will which is a very special gift from God himself and God does not want to impose God always wants us to make things in freedom even when we have faith God just invites it's up to us to say yes I believe in God or I don't believe in God and that's the way God God's love is for us he doesn't impose he doesn't force sometimes he wants our way to go before his way and it's up to us when things change like Samuel was saying well you're going to have a king but if things change don't cry out that it is God's it is because of your choices and your decisions and those things they do happen in our lives as well so yes sometimes we push our own way uh, against God's ways we push our own wishes against God's will but we are learning from Samuel uh, that there is always a voice out there which wants to correct things and that voice is in each one of us Christians that we have to be like Samuel where we see danger where we see things our voice should be strong like Samuel to warn to help and to be there to guide to direct that's the voice of Samuel in each one of us Samuel was a prophet you and I we are prophets through the virtue of baptism so yes people can push their own way but the voice of God must always come to all of us like Samuel but again we see the contrast today we see in the gospel a different way of looking at God four men they carried a paralytic and we know the story of the paralytic means because of that he was a sinner in the eyes of the people but these four men they did not care they cared so much for the sinner and bring this sinner to Christ so they are showing us the same like Samuel we too have to be there for each other we have to help one another in the journey that we are uh, moving forward into we are a pilgrim people and we have to support one another especially when someone fails we have to be there and help this is what these men are helping us and that's what God, Jesus said he looked at the faith of the four 
And then he turned to the, uh, the paralytic and said, because of their faith, your sins are forgiven. So it is important to pray for one another because the mess of God comes in our prayer. And that is what we learn from these two. There's a voice of Samuel helping people to understand that if you move away from God, things may not be well at all. And then there are four people who are helping us to understand if we see somebody moving out from God, we still have a responsibility to bring that person back to God through our prayer. And these men, they faced the challenges of reaching out to Jesus, but they did everything possible to, do, to bring this paralytic to Christ. And we too have to do everything possible to bring everyone to Jesus because that's the reason why he came. And so these voices, they are very important for us. Samuel's voice, is your voice, my voice, the four people is our apostolate. We all have to care for one another without running away from each other. That is our mission because God wants all people to be saved. My sisters and brothers in Christ, Jesus came among us in order that all humanity could experience the merciful love of God. To God our Father, we lift up our prayers and petitions. We pray for all people who carry the burden of sin that they may receive the merciful forgiveness of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all Catholics that they may rediscover the peace and freedom of the sacrament of confession, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may not give up on praying for the gift of faith for those who appear to live ungodly lives, since God is merciful and forgiving to all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who have difficult and experienced pain when standing or walking, that the skills of surgeons, nurses, occupational rehabilitation, and physiotherapists will greatly assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have been called to leadership among the nations of the world may understand that their authority comes from God and must be exercised in a way worthy of God's justice and mercy, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick or unwell in our parish, that they may experience the healing presence of God, and for the caregivers, that they may save with love and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord our God, give us the faith to walk in the light of your face, so that by living with mercy and compassion, we may rejoice in your holy name through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of man's hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of man's hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, right, and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring out the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may present glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and be gracious to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now safely let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but on say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow. Lead me to Calvary. I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me. to Calvary, lead me to Calvary. should not forget the love of Jesus Christ for us, the love that led him to Calvary. That's the love that we always have to have for one another, to help one another, to bring everybody to Christ. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also save with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. So there is an anticipation of bad weather on Sunday. So we are encouraging people to come for Saturday Mass at 5 p.m. tomorrow. But uh, we will leave open the Masses on Sunday. We are not going to cancel. Uh, if people, some people can make it, I'll be here waiting uh, on Sunday. But we are encouraging so many people to come on Saturday because we don't know how bad the weather will be on Sunday. We have enough room. We have the social hall. We have the other room there and, and the lobby and also the church. So if we can encourage people to come on Saturday Mass, but Sunday will remain open. We are not sure what will happen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth to love and save the Lord and all his people. The Mass is ended. We will end Mass in our green hymnals on page 613. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, though no one join me, still I will follow, though no one join me, still I will follow.